What does art, New Mexico, and marketing have to do with today's podcast episode? Hi, this is Kathleen Gage, and today I have the distinct pleasure of bringing you fine artist Gwen Fox. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good anything wherever in the world you are. This is Kathleen Gage and I am so excited today to be interviewing a dear friend, a colleague, an artist, a woman who uh, just does amazing things in her life's work. Uh, Gwen Fox is a nationally recognized professional artist, workshop teacher, and art coach. She has won many awards with her art and she's had many successes. Uh, such as being the only American to show with His Royal Highness Prince Philip at the Femoy Art Gallery in England. Gwen's passion is bringing out the genius in other artists. She's taking them from where they are to where they dream of being. And today we're going to talk about how she does that, how she got started, how she lets people know that she even exists. So Gwen, great to have you here. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Well, let's let's start with... Um, how did you get involved with art and um, when did you realize that art was really your passion? You know, uh, I grew up on a farm in East Tennessee and my mother uh, had to cook for the farm hands. So she had to get rid of me. And <laughs> so she uh, did plain wallpaper on the hallway of the, in one of the hallways. And she said, this is your wall. And I could do anything I wanted. And for a little girl, that was magic. And that's where it started. And so my mother, fortunately or unfortunately, had to read wallpaper that every week for years. <laughs> How old were you when, when that took place? Uh, probably around three or four. So you've been doing this for a little while. And Yes, and, uh... you know, not seriously, but I mean, you know, not professionally but as a child yes i that was that was big well let's talk about when you you switched over to being a professional artist because this show is all about how experts bona fide experts um right find ways to tap into their life's work and how they market themselves so when did you for, sell your first piece uh you know i sold my first piece probably in my 40s um, and I, but I didn't consider myself, that was just a, a little thing. I didn't consider myself a professional at all. Um, I was married to a man at the time who said, you can paint, just don't embarrass me. <laughs> so, mm. so I didn't really get a chance to do that, uh, to, to, uh, do a lot of painting. So I took, after the divorce, I took my first workshop. Uh, two months shy, two months shy of my 50th birthday. You know, I, I love hearing that because um, I, I work with a lot of older women uh, who think that after a certain age, they can't start anything new. And you've just uh, shared through your own experience that it's never too late to tap into no. your passion. Um, and so, you know, I, I could say, well, how old are you now? But how many decades have you been doing? No, I am 76 and I am Incredible. absolutely filled with passion and life because I don't want to miss anything. I love it because, you know, what that really um, tells me is that when we're living our life's purpose, we actually reverse the aging process rather than... I think we do. Older. Yeah. I, th I think we do. I'm reading a book right now that it says you can be an old, old or a young old. And the young old means that we're living our passion, we're being vibrant, we're being healthy. Right. Um, and, and so with your first sale, uh, take us on the journey of where, what that was like to where you're at now. What were some of the, um, the roads that you had to travel to get to where you're at now? Well, I, uh, I had remarried and my husband said, you've paid your dues, go for it, which was a wonderful thing to have support. And so I just took workshops after workshops. And each time I would come home and I would say, that was the best I have ever had. And then at about two weeks, I'd say, Something's missing. And what was missing was the mental aspect of creating. Mm. 
It's just like the mental aspect of anybody that you're helping in to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. it's that mental part and in art they teach how to mix colors and how to do this and they had never gotten into the to the, to the mind hmm. and so that's when I started to say I said you know I've got to find out what it is that's missing and that's when I I found out that was what was missing and then I found out that it was missing for a lot of people they were thrilled to hear about it. So I started teaching and I included that in my workshops and retreats. And that has turned out to be one of the best things I've ever done. Well, with the workshops and retreats that you do, uh, tell us more about that in, and especially that whole um, area of the mindset for an artist. Well, Little do we know, and artists don't, they just think that they go in and they create and they don't create, so they think they're not an artist. And I bet this sounds familiar to some of your people. Um, but they don't realize that the most important real estate in the entire world is the six inches between your ears. And we all know that now. And developing that, and developing the confidence and developing the belief in yourself is key to being a success as an artist and any profession, I'm sure. So it's, um, I st and I, so I started bringing in all of that information and they just ate it up because that was the missing piece. And that is the missing piece. It's that knowing how to dig in and understand who you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it. Well, give me kind of a, a sense, because as you know, my sister is a fine artist. and she I do. Well, she gets juried in. I See, I learned all this terminology before I met you because of my sister. And um, uh, she has a, a very abundant mindset around her art. She does very well. Like you, she does very well. Um, yet with a lot of artists, they have the starving artist mentality. Uh, they don't invest in themselves. They don't believe in themselves. And it might right. be that they've got a, a husband or an ex-husband um, who um, doesn't support them. So what are some of the strategies specifically that you would teach an artist to really start working on that mindset? Oh, that's a really good question because the, um, okay, number one, you're right. Artists don't necessarily want to invest in themselves. Now they'll go to a, a class or they'll go to a workshop, but it's nearby. Mm -hmm. Flying across the country or going to another country is not true. They're not going to do that. Being coached, that's huge. Um, so getting them out of the mindset that it's not a hobby. See, mm -hmm. it, that it's that starving artist mentality that, oh, well, now, honey, you can do that. Or, yes, you can do that. But remember, it's a hobby. Mm. And when I sat down with some couples that I really, really loved, and I said, I am going to be a professional artist, and I'm going to make my living this way. Well, the, the conversation that had been very lively turned to quiet. And, and they said, okay, now you might want to rethink this. Wow. You know, so it's, uh, it's getting through that mindset of, I can't make this. I can't do it. Nobody's made money in art. You know you starve. So it's getting through this mindset and, and, helping them believe that they can do whatever it is mm -hmm. that they want to do. Cause I, I tell them, I bet you don't want to be a brain surgeon, you know? So don't worry about that, but I bet you want to be an artist. I bet you want to be a artist. So you are given this gift at birth. You came mm -hmm. to fulfill your, your life's passion. And so all of a sudden they think, well, yeah, you're right. Mm. And it's changing the mindset. That's the key. That's all. That's what you have to do. So your workshops, you really focus a lot on their mindset. 
and and you help them to get to a place That's of really believing the mindset. Okay, okay. Now there's also the issue you talked about investing in themselves, and I do want to talk about that, especially like marketing themselves and um, coaches and classes. Um, why is it you think that artists don't invest in themselves, and how can you speak to that with your own experience of having coaches and taking workshops and um, I'm not, I would assume that you're in galleries because you were the only uh, American to be with his Royal Highness Prince Philip uh, in a gallery. So uh, tell me about, first of all, that whole investing in coaches and workshops. Um, how do you, how do you convey that to an artist that says, oh, I really can't afford it or, you know, I'm not a professional. When I become a professional, then I'll do it. You know, I asked them several questions. One is, how, how important is your art to you? Ah, okay. And then, what's your biggest obstacle? And they always say time or money or whatever. And, well, if that went away, where would you, where would you be? What would, you, what would happen? Mm -hmm. And then they start putting themselves into that position. And that position sounds pretty good. Ah. And so I tell them the story of when... I decided uh, my art was selling, but was it going to be enough to support myself after my husband passed? And so I decided I needed a coach after doing research. And so I did that. I lived in Colorado. The coach was in Connecticut. I flew to JFK, got a, got a cab or transport to Connecticut because the little airports didn't have what I needed. But I did that for two years, four times a year. Wow. And, and that was big. I did not know a single person. Uh -huh. I knew nothing. And this woman was not an artist. Interesting. What kind of coach was she? She was, uh, uh, she did more with the mind as okay. well. It was business. Okay. It was business and mind. And I needed that. Okay. But I, but I was the only artist in the group. They didn't really, I mean, you know, every, everybody was an expert in their field. Now uh -huh. I got to tell you, I was out of my league. But obviously it worked. Obviously it but worked. But it worked. Yes, it yes. Worked. So, and before I forget, I, I want to make sure that people know where to find you. Um, how, do, how do people find you? What's your web address? It's just GwenFox.com, G-W-E-N-F-O-X.com. Okay. I want to make sure that people know to go to GwenFox.com. And um, you've got information about your retreats on your website, I would assume? I sure do, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about um, the, the galleries that uh, an artist might be invited to display their work, but they're going to pay the gallery owner if they sell their artwork. And, and there's a lot of artists that go... I'm not going to pay 50%. What, what's your feeling on um, displaying your art in galleries and paying a commission to a gallery owner? Well, I love my galleries. I love them because I would never have met the people that purchased uh, a $9,000 painting. Okay. And I would never have met them. And I am thrilled to give them half of that. I love. That. I am thrilled, and it's a it's a it's a wonderful relationship. And you keep it good. You ask, how can I help you? Theirs is a business. See, we forget that we're thinking. Well, they're taking half of our money. Well, no, they're giving you a sale that you would never have had, and it's a business. You've got to keep them open. You know, I love hearing you say that because that's exactly what my sister says. She goes, I love galleries. I love uh, my galleries. I love my gallery owner. She goes, I bend over backwards to make their job as easy as possible. So and do she I. Goes, I'm happy to give them 50%, but she runs into a lot of artists, as I'm sure you do, who oh, say, yeah. I'm not going to give 50%. And that's why they're starving because they don't have that abundance mentality. They don't. It's, it's like, come on, you've got paintings in the corner. Why? It's because you're greedy. You're just, you want to hold yes. on to it. Well, guess what? Let it go and you get more. 
<laughs> Interesting. And um, talk about some other ways that you market. Galleries, obviously, are a great way to market. Right. Um, what are some other things that you either do yourself or you teach your clients, um, your art clients, how to, artist clients, I should say, how to market themselves? What are some of the um, simple ways for an artist? Well, uh, they should always be on Facebook. They should be on Instagram. Uh, I do a blog every Thursday and on every Tuesday I do a thought of the day, which is just really super short. And it's become one of the most popular things because we don't take time or have time anymore to read. So it's just, you know, a few sentences. Um, I do videos. I do how to videos. I do mm -hmm. mental mindset videos. I do Facebook lives. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a Facebook live on how to keep your momentum. Nice. And so, you know, I, I show my, my clients that if they would only change their O's to an E, marketing would be very interesting. O's to an E. Yes. Okay. Think about it. I've got to go market. Instead, oh, they say, I, gosh, get, I love that. I get to go market. Your whole body changes. Everything wow. changes. And it's awesome. So they do that and they think, well, I do feel different. I said, D yeah, you do. Because that's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, that one is a keeper for sure. You, you've given some great information in that one. It was just like, oh my gosh. I get to go do this thing. And, and I know that uh, you've done some podcast interviews like this particular one, and you've had some pretty good success with podcasting, yes. and you're doing more of that. Tell, tell me what your, your feelings about artists getting on podcast shows would be. What, how, do you, how do you show them the value of that? Well, the value is that they, number one, they get their name out there. Number two, they get to share what they like and, and their thoughts. And then they get people signing up for whatever it is they're offering. And I mean, that's happened to me. I had people sign up for workshops, coaching, and it's been tremendous. Excellent. Excellent. So um, again, what are some of the other uh, marketing strategies that you use? You do galleries, you do podcasts, you do uh, your blog, you do your thought of the uh, week on Tuesdays, you do Instagram. Is there anything else? Do you do networking meetings? Do you do, um, what else do you do? You know, I don't do networking meetings. I live in Taos, New Mexico. <laughs> it's little, you know, <laughs> two and a half hours away from an airport. So, okay. <laughs> so I don't do that, but I, but I do, um, I, what I will do is I'll just put out, uh, say an email saying, sign up for a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a free, it's, it's 30 minutes. We'll talk about whatever it is. You want something critique? That's great. Excellent. Excellent. So tell, um, tell the viewers about your workshops and um, w the different types of services that you offer as not only an artist, but as a coach, as a consultant, and as a workshop facilitator. That's a mouthful. <laughs> let's start with, let's start with um, your coaching. Tell us about the coaching that you do and how people can find you to, uh, to inquire about that. Well, number one, I love coaching because what it does, it's one-on-one. -on -one, it takes you as well as I critique and so forth. So I have a couple of programs that I do and uh, they get to choose which program that they want. And it's usually a year long. And the reason it is, is because it takes a year to take you from where you are to where you want to be. Nice. Nice. And okay. so, um, and I, I interview people because they're, I want to make sure. I love what you say on your, by the way, I love your video uh, saying what you do and what, who you are on your, on your website. Thank you. That is a keeper. I'm going to steal it if you don't mind. You may, you may. <laughs> we'll just uh, Photoshop your head on top of my body. <laughs> I love that. And you were right. You know, people do say, Oh, I'm too old. I can't do that. And I'm looking at him. I'm saying, I'm 76. What are you? You're, you're, you're just turned 60. You're a baby. Exactly. Come on. 
I you know, I that. said, and when you're 76, you're going to say you're too old. And I'm going to be in the 80s. And I'm going to say, come on. Absolutely. You well, know? I hope I'm as beautiful as you when I'm 76. Oh, oh you're sweet. Gosh. Thanks. Yeah. You're, uh, you're amazing. But did I do, um, I do, uh, this year I'm doing five retreats at my studio here in okay. Taos. Because Taos is a destination. It's a, an artist destination and people mm. love coming. And so I do five of these and then I have a online masterclass. Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's a three month masterclass. It starts, the next one starts September the 5th. And then I just finished a confidence course, which people can just sign up for and they just download. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Now, on your workshops, how many days are the workshops? And uh, again, they can go to your website to get all the. Things. They're five days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Gwen, this has been delightful. And um, as we're getting ready to uh, to complete our conversation, is there anything else you'd like to share or any parting words that you have? And again, give your website so that people know where to go to find you. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, it's GwenFox.com. But the, you know, this applies to everybody in every situation because I'm talking artists. Artists don't realize that they're the CEO of their own business. Mm -hmm. um, most entrepreneurs do realize this. And so I have to convince my artists that they are. But the one thing that I think that's super important is that for, for anybody to know where they're what they want and where they're going with it. Like, what do you want with your art? What do you want with your business? What, where do you want to take it? Because if you know that why, and you know where you're going, you, you can, you're going to have tumbles. You're going to have people say things. And so you can get over those really easy. The other thing is never, 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 ever give up, ever, ever give up. Yeah. And I love your saying is what is it? Play big or go home. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Gwen, this has been delightful. I adore you. I just, I think you're just the cat's meow and uh, the dogs bark. And I know you've got two beautiful, beautiful German shepherds. And yes, uh, just, I wish you so much success and abundance and keep doing what you're doing. You're an amazing woman. Thank you. Well, thank you. You've helped a lot. So I love you too, babe. All right. Bye.